Okay, so hi YouTube, my name is Richard and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. So, first of all, let me get the apologies out of the way. I do not have a sophisticated camera or lighting equipment. I'm actually taking this video on my phone. So I do apologize if the video quality or the audio quality is not that great. I hope you can hear me and see me clearly enough and see the bike or bikes clearly enough. Um, so with the apologies out of the way, my reasons for making this video. Um, I recently got back into mountain biking after many, many years of not being on a bike um, and many, many years of becoming slightly oh, more and more unfit, not slightly, more and more unfit, um, to supplement and complement by joining a gym. I thought it would be a good idea to get back out on the trails and I wanted to get back into mountain biking. I had no idea what bike I wanted to buy. I had an idea that I wanted a full suspension bike. Um, but initially I opted to buy a very, very entry level bike just to see how it got on. And you can actually see that off my shoulder there. That's the Rock Rider B-Twin 540S. It's a hardtail uh, Suntour XCR 100mm travel front suspension. Uh, my first run on a blue run on that bike was actually okay. Um, a lot of chain slap, the chain did come off a couple of times, uh, but it's okay. But what it did made me realize was that I definitely did want a full suspension bike. So after running that for a while, I decided I was going to take the plunge. Um, the reason I bought B-Twin in the first place is there is a larger decathlon near me and they've got a huge selection of bikes. So uh, and also a workshop there, and they're very, very good about when you take bikes in for repair or service. So that kind of seemed like a natural choice. Um, so when I wanted to buy a full suspension bike, they had a lovely bike on the shop floor there, which was a cross country bike. It's the XC100S, between Rock Rider XC100S. Uh, at this point, I had no idea about bike geometries, downhill, enduro, cross country, just really liked the look of the bike, actually. That's the bike there. We'll get onto that shortly. Um, and I really like the look of it. So, uh, well, me being me, I wanted to read reviews, try to make an informed decision about the bike. But trolling YouTube, could not find any English spoken videos reviewing this bike. They're all French or Italian. And I don't speak French or Italian. So, uh, obviously no help to me. But ultimately I did end up taking the plunge. And this is my review video uh, for all you English speaking people out there who are thinking about buying the bike and want an informed decision. Um, this is my reason for making this video. So what we're going to do is just run through the bike now, what the bike came with in terms of components, uh, some small modifications I made just to make my ride position a little bit easier and also a couple of things aesthetically that I wanted to change. Um, and then we'll get out on the trails. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to do that, edit this into the video, come up with a conclusion and see what you guys think. Depending on how this goes, maybe I will do another video and another video after that. Um, who knows? But let's get back to the bike. So we're going to do this now. We're going to have a look at the bike and uh, see what you guys think. OK, guys, so let's have a look at the bike in more detail. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk through the components of the bike, what it ships with, uh, touch upon a couple of the modifications that I've made uh, and my reasons for the modifications. If you want uh, more of an in-depth review on any of the components that I mentioned, by all means pop that in the comments. I'm more than happy to do that. So let's have a look at, uh, first of all at the bike itself. So you'll notice there, and as I said before, it's the XC100S. XC, I'm not sure if you can see it there, but it stands for Cross Country. So what that does mean is that this bike has a cross-country geometry. Um, actually, looking at this, this video now, the head tube and the, the angle of the forks does look quite steep. In reality, it, it looks far more relaxed than that in the flesh. Um, but it does run, I'm sure off the top of my head, it's around about the 68 or 69 degree geometry on the head tube there. 
So uh, we'll talk about that in conclusion, but it may be something to be aware of. Now, what it ships with by default. So all of these, uh, all of the um, standard B twin components, such as the stem, the the headset, the handlebar, the seat post, I've changed the, all those out. Um, really just to fine tune my riding position. Um, so the bike ships with a 90 mil stem, plus minus seven degrees, uh, 720 wide handlebar with a 20 mil rise, a nine degree back sweep. Um, I've changed that out for a whole Richie cockpit. So I've changed the stem, I've gone shorter on the stem, uh, 70 mil versus 90 mil. I've put a, things like a Richie top cap on there. Um, I put the matching trail st handlebar on again, same spec in terms of size and um, height or rise and back sweep. Uh, but just to make it look right, I put a Richie, Richie set on there. Um, you can see also here, it does come with a full suspension lockout. That was a key factor in me for buying this bike. This feature you normally expect to see on a much more expensive bike and it was a, a big bonus for me. Being able to lock that suspension out just means you can climb the bike more efficiently. You're not bobbing around on that suspension. Your energy has not been sapped, uh, so it just makes the whole thing more efficient. Um, it is a grip shift style uh, suspension lock, but actually that functions really, really well. So I'm more than happy with that. Um, the Tektro hydraulic brakes, uh, I think it's a 200mm rotor on the front and 150mm rotor on the back. Um, Tektro is very entry level, uh, I would say, uh, but again, functions very, very well. Plenty of modulation, one finger braking without any difficulties whatsoever. Um, I'll come on to the saddle and seat post. So first of all, I took the default between saddle off. I found it very uncomfortable, very hard. Um, the WTB Volt Race saddle works really well for me. Plenty supportive, um, nice padding. So it's nice and soft, but it also hammocks very, very slightly. So it works really well for me. Um, I changed the default between seat post, but a PNW Components Rainier seat post in there. That's kind of half spring, half hydraulic cable actuated. Um, fantastic seat post. If you want more, more of an in-depth review on that, let me know. Um, I did actually upgrade that purchase to get the PNW Loam dropper remote with that. Makes fitting of the seat post and operation of the seat post super, super slick. Um, it's a SRAM 1x11 uh, drive system. It's a 30 tooth drive ring. Um, Really, really good. The NX um, is actually SRAM's entry level, but it functions really, really well. It is still SRAM, so you, so you do get that reliability. It's all index change, so it works really well. Um, the fork is a Manitou Marco 120mm travel, damping control, rebound control. It has a backslung arch. Um, maybe it's a taste thing. I actually really like the look of it. It sets the bike apart a little bit, but there is a hidden kind of function of that, which I'll touch upon. Um, but let's come and have a look at the uh, rear shock. So it's uh, a Manitou Radium. It actually says Rock Rider Specs on there, so I, I think this might be designed specifically for this bike, for B-Twin. Uh, again, it's 120 mil travel. You can see from my O-ring there, I'm probably using 60, maybe 70% of my travel, which is ideal for me. Um, the tires are Hutchinson Toro. This is the, the tire that the bike ships with. Um, loads of reviews out on this tyre, you can find it, any of those reviews, either read the reviews or find the reviews on YouTube. Um, I'm more than happy with this tyre, it performs really well, it's nice and grippy. Um, apparently, looking at the reviews, the, the Toro is Hutchinson's best tyre for a long, long time. So, uh, no problems with that. Uh, you can see also, I've put a seat post mounted chain guide on there. Um, this is actually a PressFit 92 bottom bracket, so it doesn't support ISCG or ICG05 components, um, but that is a very, if you do want to know that RSP uh, chain guide, very, very good, very solid. I've also put a return chain guide on there. Um, I hate chain slap, I hate a rattly bike. It's just a, a, a thing that to make my ride experience much better. It's a aluminium frame. This particular one is large. Um, so it supports a bottle cage just there. Um, again, if you want any uh, kind of more in-depth reviews on any of these components, uh, let me know. Um, I'm happy to put another video out for that. Um, actually, more than happy to put another video out for that. It'd be quite quite good fun putting another video out. 
But what I'm going to do is take this out on the trail. Hopefully I'll capture some decent footage. I've never done this before, so I can't quite predict how that's going to come out right now. Um, I'll then put together a brief conclusion on this bike. But let me just say, first of all, this has been a cracking bike for me. Um, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. The geometry of the bike looks right. I, I kind of would draw you away from how this looks on the video because the, the head bracket does look far more relaxed than that in real life. Um, but hopefully you'll pick that up on the on the trail video or, or section of this video and in the conclusion. But again, uh, if you have any questions or want me to touch upon anything in more depth, let me know uh, and I'll do that for you. Uh, so we'll go to the trail video, we'll come to the conclusion and then we'll take one there. So what would be my final comments on this bike? Uh, I think first and foremost, for me, it's been a, a, a cracking bike. Um, it does exactly what I want it to do. Um, the travel on the suspension is, is good enough for, for my riding style and level. Um, and also for the £750, you're going to struggle to find a better bike in, in that price bracket. If you're going to be paying full price for it, £1,100, then there may be better options on the market. Uh, certainly if you're willing to push that budget a little bit further, maybe up to 1500, there are better bikes on the market. Um, but 1100 is still a reasonable price point for this level of bike and, and this level of riding. The main thing I think is consider what you're gonna be using the bike for. Um, if like me, you're just trying to hone your skills on the blue courses, maybe get that confidence up on your jumps. Um, maybe get your speed a little bit faster, uh, but also have the ability to efficiently climb to the top of the hill. As we all know, you've got to go up before you can come down. Um, then this bike is a cracking all-rounder. Things to consider, if you want to push on to the next level, you maybe want to think about a more relaxed head tube, uh, so slightly different, more downhill focused geometry. Um, but if you just want it, in it as a high-end entry-level bike, uh, honestly, for the for the money I paid for it, £750, you're going to struggle to find better. If you look around, Decathlon always have offers on, um, especially when they are bringing out a slightly newer version. I think when this came out, there was a slightly newer version, and literally it was just a, um, I think it was a new saddle, um, and a couple of things, very, very slight tweaks. Maybe I think they changed the wheels a little bit, but it dropped from £1,100 to £750 and literally no difference whatsoever in the ride. I changed a lot of the components anyway, so for me, it was a, it was a cracking deal. Keep an eye out for those deals. If you do drop on, it's a no-brainer. Uh, if you are willing to push your budget, like I said, go a little bit higher. If you would like me to do more of an in-depth review on the components, such as the Marco forks or the Radium Shock, uh, let me know in the comments. If you want some uh, more information on my uh, change of my B2540, to more of a hybrid stroke road bike let me know i'm happy to do that if you don't want any more videos also let me know um, but if you do like this video click the subscribe button click the thumbs up button and maybe i'll turn this into a proper channel as opposed to just putting a video out because i was annoyed that there wasn't an english speaking video on this bike thank you for your time and hopefully see you soon